A sealed tissue culture vessel like this one maintains close to 100% humidity, so it might surprise you that humidity-hating plants like cacti and succulents actually thrive in tissue culture. Not only do they grow well, but because of their hardiness, they're also one of the easiest plants to successfully micropropagate. In part one of this video, I'll show you how to establish cacti and succulents in tissue culture. And in part two, I want to show you a new method for germinating cactus and succulent seeds. Everything that I use for this video, including the chemicals, will be linked below. Also merch, I have it. This is the new Plants in Jars shirt. On the front, we have a little jar with plants and jars. And on the back, there is a really badass skeleton. I don't sell plants anymore, so a great way to support my channel is by buying a really dope shirt. Okay, let's get into the video. Today for the media, I'm using a very general multiplication media. I didn't film myself making this media because I think it gets boring after a while, but I will put the recipe on the screen right now. If you need tips for making TC media or it's your first time, I recommend you go over to my learn TC in 10 minutes video. That will give you the information that you need to succeed. I have a very modest cacti and succulent collection at home. They used to be one of my favorite plants ever. Now I have very few. I actually don't have a lot of plants at all. Plants in jars has sort of transcended the need for plants. My entire universe exists inside a tissue culture jar. So I decided to make my way to Home Depot to purchase some cacti and succulents to sacrifice to the ghost of Gautelieb Haberlant, the father of plant tissue culture. May he rest in peace. While I was at the Home Depot, I had the distinct feeling that I was being watched. No idea why. I did manage to procure some plants though, and we are going to use them to gather explants, which is a fancy word for tissue samples. The tool that I'm using to take my explants is a pineapple cutter. I saw Francisco from Plant Cell Technology use a pineapple cutter, so I bought a pineapple cutter. Before we start, a quick anatomy lesson. These spots on a cactus are called areoles. I don't know who named them that, but yeah, it's like mildly funny. Areoles. These areoles act as the growth center for cacti. They utilize meristematic cells to produce new spines, new flowers, new branches. And this makes the areoles, <laughs> sorry, the ideal candidate for a tissue sample for tissue culture. I used the pineapple cutter to remove some areoles from the cacti. Um, the pineapple cutter is primarily good for cacti that have larger areoles that you can easily <laughs> grab onto. And for cacti that grow in clumps like this one, you can essentially use an entire clump, so to speak, as your explant. For succulents, like this Echeveria, for example, the process of taking explants is even easier. You literally just need to pull off a few leaves. It's not totally unlike the traditional method of propagating succulents, which would just be to place a leaf cutting on the dirt. I'd recommend using newer leaves rather than older ones. Actively growing parts of the plant are going to be better for tissue culture. Earlier in the video, I said that cacti and succulents are easy to tissue culture compared to other plants. And the reason for this is because they're a lot hardier and they can handle a higher concentration of bleach than leafier, more foliage plants like philodendrons and monsteras. To sterilize the explants that we just took, we are going to mix up a solution of 20% Clorox bleach and 80% water. I'm going to leave these explants in the bleach solution for about 20 minutes. I keep them on the orbital shaker, but you can also just agitate them by hand or use a magnetic stirrer with a stir bar to do so. I'd also recommend tipping the jars 180 degrees so that the bleach has the opportunity to sterilize the entire inside of the jar. Around the 12 minute mark, you'll want to check on your explants. Generally, when the tissue exposed to the bleach starts to turn white, that's how you know you are close to having them fully sterile and ready to go into the TC media. The spiky, fluffy part of the cactus, the areole, can take longer than other parts of the plant to disinfect, so err on the side of sterilizing for the longer portion of 20 minutes. 
If you go through this whole tutorial and you are getting contamination, I would recommend trying sterilizing these explants for even longer. I bring my explants under the flow hood to rinse them. I dump out the bleach solution and then I'm going to refill each of the containers with sterile water that I had autoclaved ahead of time. Instead of wasting a bunch of time autoclaving water, like plants in jars, <laughs> you can also just buy sterile distilled water from the grocery store and it will be clean enough to use for tissue culture. Um, not this one, this one contains fertilizer for my begonias. After I add the water, I place the explants back on the orbital shaker for a minute or two. With each container of explants, we are going to repeat this process three times. Yes, three. <laughs> I know it's low-key a huge pain in the butt, and sterilizing explants and rinsing them is by far my least favorite part of the entire tissue culture process, yet we must persist. Stay strong, micropropagation soldiers of the plants in Jarmy. Join my Discord server if you need support in this trying time. After three rinses with the sterile water, our explants are ready to go into the tissue culture media. Under the flow hood, I have a sterile pair of forceps, a sterile pair of scissors, and a sterile stainless steel tray. When I say sterile, I just mean that all of those items have been autoclaved prior to using them underneath the flow hood. I also have the Bacti Zapper turned on high heat so that I can re-sterilize my forceps and my scissors between handling different cultures. Before the explants go into TC, we need to cut off that dead tissue that was exposed to the bleach. Basically all the tissue that has turned white needs to get cut off. Once these containers are sealed, it is like 100% humidity inside of them. In these particular containers, there's no air vent for gas exchange, and even if you were using vented containers to allow for better gas exchange, the humidity would still be really freaking high. I asked an internet friend who's doing his PhD currently why cacti are able to grow in TC, and he replied that the cactus tissue itself doesn't really mind humidity. In their natural habitat, cacti are built to soak up and store moisture for a long time. And when you overwater a cactus, the system gets shocked and makes the cactus more prone to infection and rotting. And I think most people here have overwatered a cactus at some point in our lives and seen what that looks like. It just turns into a big, soppy mess. When a cactus or succulent rots, it's actually due to anaerobic conditions that encourage the growth of bacteria and fungi that can attack the plant and cause it to decay. In tissue culture, everything is sterile, so we have no bacteria or fungi present, which means there's really no way to rot your cacti plants in TC from too much water, which is a good thing since the semi-solid tissue culture media is mostly water. Another interesting factor is that cacti in TC usually don't have roots, at least not until the very end of the TC process. So since they don't have roots, the cacti aren't soaking up excess moisture and exploding like they do ex vitro. When it comes to placing these plants in the media, you want the explants to make good contact with the media without necessarily submerging the plants at all. Once I have my containers of plants, I seal the containers with plastic wrap and then I place them under my grow lights. These lights are not sponsored, but they are the Nurser 3 lights from Horty Power and I would recommend them. I like them. As far as next steps, you can treat cacti and succulents in tissue culture the same way you would treat any other type of plant. I typically subculture them or move them from one container of media to a new container of media every four to six weeks. And when I do that transfer, the media that I'm using is the same as the multiplication recipe that I showed at the beginning of the video. These are some Echeveria Lowies that I've had in tissue culture for about eight weeks now. You can see that there's a lot of tissue growth and even some baby plants starting to form. Back in 2016, I want to say when I was really into succulents, we were all into succulents back then. I wanted an Echeveria Lowy so bad, but they were like hundreds of dollars. And then when I bought this one for the video, it was only like $20. And it wasn't even the cheapest one I could have got. There were ones on there for like 10 bucks. It's just crazy how plant prices change over time. Okay, seeds. Welcome to my Cactus Seed ASMR channel. That was weird. 
the last video that I made on this channel was all about germinating seeds in tissue culture. In that video, I used a sterile pair of forceps to transfer sunflower seeds into multiplication media. A couple people asked some really great questions about growing cactus seeds in tissue culture because they are so small and basically impossible to pick up with forceps. I recently germinated some Jebeum Comptonii seedlings in tissue culture. I know they're not technically cacti. Before you can put cacti and succulent seeds into TC, the seeds do need to be properly sterilized. In a 50 milliliter centrifuge tube, I add five milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide and 45 milliliters of water. I left the cactus seeds Sorry, I keep saying cactus. I know they're not cacti, but I left those seeds in the solution to soak for 48 hours. After 48 hours, the seeds are clean and they are ready to go into tissue culture. If you're just wanting to germinate the seeds in TC, then I would use this media formulation over here, which doesn't contain any plant growth regulators. If you want to grow multiple plants from one seed, then I would use this media formulation, which is the same one we used earlier in the video. Since these seeds are too small to pick up with forceps, we need to get creative. This, wait one sec. This is a mechanical pipitor. You can buy them on Amazon. That is where I bought mine. These are used to very accurately measure and pick up small amounts of liquid. You use this dial to specify how much liquid you want to pick up Today, we are going to have it on the lowest setting for this specific pipitor, which is one milliliter. The pipette tips, which are in this box, need to be sterile when we handle the seeds, since the seeds will have already been cleaned very well. I think that technically this entire box of tips can go directly into the autoclave, but like I said, I got these on Amazon and I did not have a great amount of confidence. So instead of autoclaving the pipette tips in the box like this, I just used a sterilization pouch. It's hard to see, but there is a just single pipette tip in there. Underneath the flow hood, I have my centrifuge tube with my sterile seeds, as well as my pipitor, the sterile pipette tip, and the fresh tissue culture media. I open the centrifuge tube that contains my seeds and I stick the pipette tip down into it to pick up some of the seeds. The seeds are going to be floating in that liquid sterilization solution, which is completely fine. We don't need to rinse the seeds before putting them into TC because one, we used a very low concentration of hydrogen peroxide and two, hydrogen peroxide starts to decompose into water and oxygen when when it's exposed to light, which is why it's always stored in opaque containers. The solution can cause condensation inside of the container to build up. So to combat that, I dump out the excess solution onto my work surface. You might think that the seeds will also fall out when I tip the containers and dump out that solution, but that's not the case at all. The seeds adhere very well to the semi-solid tissue culture media. After I've got all the seeds into the media, I treat these like I would any other plant. So that is how you germinate small seeds in tissue culture. Today we did cacti, actually we did succulents, sorry, oh my god. Um, but it would work also for any other type of small seed that you're not able to pick up with forceps, so it's not necessarily just specific to succulents. This is unrelated to seeds, but while I was doing research for this video, I found out that there are a couple notoriously difficult to micropropagate succulents, and one of those is the pseudolithos. This was going to be the part of the video where I showed off the pseudolithos that I won on eBay, but when I checked this morning, <laughs> I found out that I lost the auction last night. I suck at bidding on stuff. I should just stop. Anyway, I am in the market for a pseudolithos because I want to try to tissue culture it for fun. Before I go, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Plant Cell Technology. They sell everything that you need to make the multiplication media and the seed starting media that we used in this video today. One of my next videos is going to be me setting up a bunch of biocouplers for the biotilt. Actually, spoiler alert, you can kind of see it up there behind me. Um, the biotilt is a machine that actually flips your temporary immersion bioreactors so that you don't have to do it by hand. My code, which is plants in jars, gives you 10% off anything on the plant cell technology website 
including their online and in-person tissue culture master classes. I've taken the in-person one before and it was phenomenal. Thank you again to Plant Cell Technology for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!